Hi friends, uh, welcome back. In this module, uh, we are going to discuss about these bullet points. How to set up a Couchbase node. It involves two phases, initialization and provision. A walkthrough on uh, adding and removing nodes. And we will also discuss about the failover and failover types and how to rebalance the cluster and when a rebalance usually pops up in the cluster. That we are going to see. And recovering a node post failover. We will also discuss about the types of failover, delta and full. And we can also see use of server groups in Couchbase. So initialization versus provisioning. After installation and starting of the Couchbase server, a node must be initialized and provisioned. So basically what happens in initialization phase? So we will define the disk path for all the services we are going to use like data, index, query, eventing and analytics service. We define the path. So basically we use same path on all the nodes of the uh, cluster. If you want, you can give individual paths for each node that you can define in the initialization phase. Provisioning phase, all the details including full administration credentials and the list of services you are going to assign for that specific node and the memory quota definition are established in the provision stage. Initialization can be performed explicitly and independently of provisioning as prior process in order to have create custom disk path. Here is the command to initialize a node with CLI. So you need to provide data path, index path and analytics path like this along with cluster admin credentials. So this is the expected message post the successful initialization of the node. Initializing a node with REST API, we are using POST method and calling node slash self slash controller slash settings and we are providing the path like this. If you see here, uh, the slash is represented as percentage 2F. The path is slash opt slash couchbase slash var slash lib slash couchbase slash data. Like this, uh, we are providing paths for index, analytics and eventing services. So this command initializes the disk paths for data, index, analytics and eventing service. Provisioning key nodes, credentials and memory allocations are inherited, which means if you provide credentials, admin credentials, that will be inherited. Suppose you allocated data service for a node with specific memory settings and if you are adding one more data service node, the same memory settings will be inherited for that node as well. Service assignments are made independent for each node, which means you can allocate different types of services for each and individual node independently. You can assign data service for one node in the cluster. You can assign index and query services combined to a different node. This is the command to provision a node with CLI. So we are providing admin credentials and services field. We are allocating data index query services with a cluster RAM size of 512 MB. This cluster RAM size means for the data service. Cluster index RAM size is 256 MB. So for the data service, we are allocating 512 MB RAM. And for index service, we are allocating 256 MB RAM. Query service doesn't require any RAM. And this question can be asked in the interviews as well, whether query service require any RAM or not. No, it doesn't. Provision a node with the REST API. These are the service flags for each service. So if you want to allocate data service, you can call it as KB. These are the specific flags for each and individual service. Again, using POST method here in hyphen D services, we are allocating KB, which is nothing but data service, nickel, which is nothing but query service, index, which is nothing but index service. After that, in this specific curl command, we are allocating memory quota 256 for data service, index memory quota 256 MB for index service, and nickel, which is query service, doesn't need any RAM. In the next video, we can see how to practically initialize and provision a node.